in a time of social media. So before we all start off, everybody a big smile, big thumbs up, and I have to start off with a selfie. Otherwise, it just wouldn't be quite right. Hey, my name's Brett Tax. I'm from uh, the U.S. If you haven't figured out by my funny accent. Why do we keep making the same poor choices if we already know it's a bad choice? We know we're not supposed to look down in the corner. We know we shouldn't be chopping the throttle. We know we shouldn't tense up. And the reason is, is fear. Fear is what causes us to make all of those different mistakes. Once fear takes over and we lose the ability to control the motorcycle, we end up getting in trouble. So what causes fear? A lack of control. When you feel that you're out of control, when you feel the bike is going too fast, fear steps in. And once you go from being in a cognitive state to a reactive state, all bets are off. What causes a sense of lack of control is often a lack of understanding. That's where the education comes in. That's where doing uh, seminars like what we're offering today, that's where attending the training that's offered by, uh, well, through this whole program, through the, through the, uh, um, thank you. But the training that you guys have, the, the bronze, the silver, the gold, that training that's available to you is what allows you to have a better understanding so that fear doesn't kick in. Because as long as you maintain cognitive control, then you make sure that you have control of the situation and the road. We have to stay out of that. How many of you are familiar with the great American philosopher, Homer Simpson? Homer Simpson has three kids, but two of them I'm going to talk about. He's got one daughter who's always smart and gets everything right. Her name is? And he's got a little troublemaker. His name is? In this particular episode, Lisa's getting in all kinds of trouble. She's causing all kinds of mischief. And Bart's going, yeah, wait till she gets busted. Well, finally, Homer finds out about it. And he looks at Lisa and he looks at Bart. He says to Bart, go to your room. And Bart goes, but I wasn't doing it. Lisa did it. And he says, boy, in times of trouble, you go with what you know. <laughs> Turns out many of us ride our motorcycles this way. We do casual braking all the time. And when somebody pulls out in front of us, we do casual braking in a hurry. It's not our best braking. That's why we get the .7. It's one of the few skills you can't practice every day while doing normal commuting. And again, that's where these training opportunities come into play, where you not just practice, because if you're practicing poor braking or poor habits, you're just ingraining bad habits. They have to be right. And sometimes the greatest value is not what an instructor might be able to teach you, but the ability for them to confirm what you're doing well, <coughs> or what you're not doing so well at. But they can see, sometimes your mind, what you think you're doing isn't what you're really doing. And that's one of the greatest values of having uh, an instructor be able to watch you. So there's four different things. I'm gonna, uh, there's a lot of things I, I get into thinking about psychology and why do writers do what we do? Why do we act the way we act if we already know it's a bad idea? It's called cognitive bias. These are mental shortcuts that we use as humans to process information very quickly. The problem is we often take information that's not factual and we log it away as a fact. This gets us in a lot of trouble, and it exists a lot within myths and misinformation within this writing, uh, this writing community. I mean, I asked the question today about suspension. If you'd really thought about it and broke it down, you probably could have got the right answer the first time through. The first one's called Dunning-Kruger effect. This is when you know a little bit, and you think you know a lot, and chances are you tell everybody all the things you know and how good you are. Two things cause this. One is ignorance, I just don't know any better, and two is stupidity. We can fix one of those. The Dunning-Kruger effect means the bottom performers think they're the top performers. It also means the top performers are very good about knowing their skill set, but they overestimate what the average is. So they don't think they're doing as well as others, even though they know how well they're doing as far as the skill itself. The Dunning-Kruger effect is what gets us in trouble when we start riding as new riders. We become complacent. About two years down the road, our accident rates are higher than the brand new riders, about 24 months. And this is something we need to make sure we avoid. Confirmation bias. I believe something, I heard it, that means it's true. It's the right-hand turning car that used to be one that was very common. You see it on the news because they repeat all those. They put them on the news. They don't talk about the guy that fell off the side of the road. You sit down with all your buddies at dinner or, or for breakfast or for lunch, 
and they all say the same thing. They reinforce what you already believe. We get a lot of that within our riding community. Loud pipes save lives. Something I hear in my home country a lot. There's nothing supporting that. Lots of stuff showing opposite, but people keep saying it so they keep believing it. That's confirmation bias. Risk compensation is why basic rider education doesn't work. Guy makes a living doing safety training. I just said, wait, basic riding doesn't work. Basic riding gets people on the road. It shows them how to ride. But the problem is, is if they don't reinforce that, within six months, almost all of it's gone. After 12 months, there's no remnants. Training works when it's repetitive, when people continue to develop it, when they reinforce what they have. That's when it makes a serious difference. Also, if I make you better riders and I make you corner better, chances are you're gonna go faster. Now, when you do crash, you're gonna crash at a higher speed. That's a problem. So when we look at risk compensation, the more dangerous something is, the less risk you take. And then we do the, the, uh, the opposite. If I take all of you and say, we're gonna do lap times today, everybody get naked. <laughs> let's go do a lap time. Now you come back around, it puts you on full leather, say, now let's do another lap time. Do you think there would be a difference? <laughs> Guarantee. So risk compensation. There's something we have to be very, very careful about when we're doing training, when we become better and more skilled riders, that we don't eat up that benefit by changing our habits and increasing our risk. That's a natural tendency we have as humans, is to have that balance. Each one of us has some kind of risk level, and we'll always seem to migrate back to that. We have to keep ourselves in check on that. The very last one is one that you're suffering right now. If you want to see the most intelligent person in all of New Zealand, do not look at the person next to you. Motorcycles are not very smart. We don't ride them because they make sense. They're not economical. They're not safer. Half the time, we can't get through traffic any faster. Most of our bikes are fuel hogs. And if they're not, we ride them so we burn up more fuel. We ride bikes because they are fun because we like them, because it's, it's a passion, something we enjoy. The whole idea is to go out on a ride and to come back after the end of that ride and be able to ride again tomorrow. That blind spot bias says that you're very good at pointing out or noticing the faults of others, but not yourself. So when I mention these breaking numbers, I'm not talking about the guy next to you. When I talk about these cornering issues, I'm not talking about the guy next to you. When you reflect on yourself and you realize what you know and you question everything you've learned, question everything you believe, research it, multiple areas. Question, try different riding techniques. There's not one way. That's when you guys become very good riders. That's when you live for another day. That's when we get to buy lots of more motorcycles in the future. Thank you very much.